we are going to do a psychic brain massage. We'll fucking do it then, pussy. Oh my. Oh, oh my. Oh. Oh my. I'm expecting any minute now for him to like chug a fifth of vodka and just say shoe nice or something. Can you feel? Oh, oh, oh. He's powerful. God damn. Oh, ooh, way. Hey, whoa, be nice to the psyche. We can connect. Yes, please. Let's connect. That's what I want. Oh, from your mind. Oh, whoa. In and out. Wow. Your brain. Oh, yes. Pet it, please. Wonderful. That felt great. If had the misfortune to handle this incorrectly, you would most certainly have a painful and horrible death. What? Sadly, this subject has been covered before by someone I know. Uranium. I found this story really interesting, and I had to do a video about it. Plutonium. This video. Fuck. Son of a like bitch. many of my atomic videos, our story starts during the Second Things World a bit War spicy. and the Manhattan Project. The Demon Core, or Rufus, as it was originally nicknamed was intended to be used in a third atomic bomb to be dropped on Japan. It was designed to be 5% below critical mass. So this doesn't seem like super interesting though. Safe. Like, how we know now how dangerous plutonium is. to ensure is. that when needed, it could be used to make a very large explosion easily. Seems like a really comprehensive lesson into the dangers of plutonium, but yeah, I was expecting like some wild shit. But I mean, it's a good sport. I certainly have no problem with shin kicking. Balance. When do they find there it is? The danger to the sack is really high in this sport, but I'm pretty sure they wear a cup. So the Harvard Globeheads debunked their model yesterday. <laughs> You're not testing on a ball, guys. The earth is flat. Oh shit. Wait, wait, wait. is this serious or no? We're gonna put one magnet here in California. Seriously, I'm about to lose it. I'm getting pissed. This I is don't a, know this how is you're going to take a one-mile piece of toilet paper and hit space. God damn it. I thought he was going to die, dude. I literally thought he was going to die. Wow. <laughs> I thought you... Holy oh, shit. That was a complete shot. I thought it was an actual flat earth thing. You can't write that stuff, guys. I'm just having my freaking world rock. Shut the fuck up! It's everything. This looks I very know, high effort, I'm though. Right. Wow. And I've always been right. You guys <laughs> get it? You guys fucking get it? <laughs> Damn, the amount of effort that seems to have gone into that is wild. It says parody? What, where? Oh, god damn it! <laughs> well, I mean, I think it was pretty clear. But, yeah, I should have just seen this right away. Not got excited. Saw the Harvard Globeheads. Phase rug Gatorade in Windex bottle prank? Tell me if it's fake or not. Alright, I don't have to watch it, I can tell you it's fake. Phase Rug is in the fucking title. What do you mean? I'll watch it uh, for a couple seconds, just to confirm, make make sure I'm on the right track here. I don't want to be wrong. But, uh, I can tell you it's definitely fake. What's going on, guys? Phase Rug. I know her reaction is going to be funny. It's going to be so fun to do. And I oh, God. I'm actually scared to do this. Read, and I'm gonna ask her if she needed help cleaning. Can I my Do I got something? Did you really fucking drink him now with that? Come on, you should look. <laughs> it looks, my mom got so scared. You were on it's fake. That's yeah, probably enough uh, Phase Rugs content for the whole year, in fact. We just reached the, the limit. Watch the Glico Morinaga incident, Japan's greatest unsolved mystery. We explore the Glico Morinaga case and its perpetrator, the monster with 21. That's a cool cases. title, I'm in. Is accuracy, but nothing could have prepared him for the night of March 18th, 1984, or the subsequent nightmare that would last nearly a year and a half after that. Mm. At approximately. The two men first happened upon Mrs. Izaki and one of the couple's three children. This is not what I was they expecting at all bound. here. Meanwhile, Katsuhisa, hearing the commotion, tried to remain unnoticed in the nearby bathroom with his two other children, but his efforts were ultimately in vain. Do but wait. 
A ransom request was made the very next morning, with the unidentified assailants asking for the equivalent of $4.3 million, along with 220 pounds of gold. Damn! A staggering amount for anyone, but one that what would ultimately fuck? never have to be paid. Just three days later, Katsuhisa managed to escape completely unharmed, revealing to both police and the public that he'd been held in a warehouse in nearby Ibaraki City, not far from his own company's headquarters. What Puzzlingly the fuck? enough, the CEO also claimed that he managed to finally escape because he, for some reason, had been left unmonitored. Almost a month after the taking of Katsuhisa Izaki, more bizarre events began to unfold for Glico. On April 10th, a number of vehicles outside the company HQ were inexplicably set on fire in a <laughs> suspected arson case. What the fuck is going Just on with Glico? Later, Jesus. A container They're full haunted. of hydrochloric acid was located in one of Glico's buildings. Both Glico and local Osaka media received letters claiming that cyanide laced packs of the company's candy fuck. would be placed on store shelves. The letters signed by a person or group. Damn, this is like the actual Zodiac killer. Like, he must have fled the states and then went the here to torment the chocolate guy. Taken from the works of mystery writer Glico and the Ogawa, Chocolate Factory. Specifically, a character known as the monster or fiend with 20 faces. It goes without saying that what happened next here was mass panic, and of course for good reason. It's now, Arisaka. despite all the damage, however, yeah, no poison candies were actually found. Meanwhile, investigators were scrambling to crack the case, but the so-called monster with 21 faces was slippery, and they knew it. As this was all going on, the letters did not stop. Many that were sent to the media were addressed directly to Japanese police, who the monster described as stupid and incompetent. Oh, hey, that's too, hey, 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 so let's not be rude. What the fuck? Frustrated with police, they're doing their best. The vehicle was gray, and that they'd entered Glico's factory via the front gate in order to plant the container filled with acid, which they that's gotta be embarrassing. was originally street garbage. The letters themselves Imagine being so incompetent at your job that the criminals you're trying to catch are just openly but giving you hints to make it more fun for them because you can't figure it out on your solid own. solid clues as to the monster's identity, aside from the fact that they seemed local based on the dialect that was used. There did, however, appear to be one possible break in the case after Glico's products had been recalled. Oh. This man was spotted on CCTV, seemingly placing something onto a store shelf. We got him! It is a bit difficult to make out, but the man here is wearing a business suit and glasses, along with a Tokyo Yomiuri Giants baseball cap. Oh, I actually this thought that was a New York Yankees cap for a second, I'm not gonna lie. ...footage associated with this case, but whoever is depicted in it, the so-called videotaped man, has never been identified or even formally connected to the person or group who calls themselves the monster with 21 faces. On June 26, at the height of all the chaos and confusion, something even more bizarre took place. Oh god. Another letter had turned up, but this time, this time it was a love letter that the monster was done with Glico. The note addressed to the people of Japan said the president of Glico has already gone around with his head hanging down long enough. We would like to forgive him. Japan has gotten terribly hot and humid, so when our work is done, yeah, maybe I'll check that one out Europe, next, right? Geneva, Paris, London, we'll be in one of those places. Let's bring Pocky, the traveler's friend. Delicious Glico products. We're eating them too. See you in January of next year. And it even came without any money being exchanged. This, of course, would seem ultimately Yeah, they haven't made a single fucking dime from this shit. If ...not for the fact that the monster really hadn't stopped at all. In fact, it had already started targeting other brands, including one Marudai food company, with much the same tactics it had already used with Glico. Once again, ransom was demanded in exchange for peace, and unlike Glico, Marudai was ready to comply. Oh no! with a catch. On June 28th, just two days after the- Why well, comply? They clearly just gave up last time. With Glico, ...said man was described as having a larger build, short hair, glasses, and most notably, eyes said to resemble those of a fox. The what? undercover cop was in So you sent a cop that was high. A white flag, the signal to drop the money. But since that flag never appeared, the cop continued on the route until its eventual end in Kyoto. He was only there long enough to hop on the next available train back to Osaka, and sure enough, the fox-eyed man boarded the exact same train. 
This time, the monster wasn't bluffing. Several packs of Morinaga products were found with additional labels on them reading, Danger Contains Poison, signed The Monster with 21 Faces. In response, a oh, staggering 40,000 Japanese police they, officers they kind of set to watch over get rid of the surprise by saying that. Stores. In August of 1985, things were still at a standstill, and the Japanese public were furious with law enforcement's perceived Appreciate incompetence. it, Giggle. Thank you. And the yeah, pressure GTR was too fun. much for one man in particular who had worked on the case. Superintendent Shoji Yamamoto, who, tragically out of shame, set himself on fire and would ultimately pass away. What? The monster, meanwhile, had been watching- What? This is like literally an anime plot. The fucking detective was so ashamed he couldn't catch the guy that he lit himself on fucking fire? This is probably what he looked like when he was burning alive, too, just so fucking stoic about it. Like, yeah, I'm burning alive, what of it? What of it? Huh, pussy? My god! What?! Bro, like, over here, the, the fucking lead detective on a case probably thinks about it ten minutes out of his day. And meanwhile, this guy was so consumed by it and so disappointed he couldn't crack it, he lit himself on fucking fire. We decided to give our condolences. We decided to forget about torturing food making companies. If anyone blackmails any of the food making companies, it's not us, but someone copying us. We are bad guys. That means we've got more to do other than bullying companies. <laughs> Kind of the a lame note, not gonna lie, kind of lame. On their but even so, people were still left with no answers, no real reason Wait, for what? why all the- So, this is fucking crazy! So the guy lit himself on fire, and that was such a profound statement that the criminals just stopped. So this guy, like he must have seen, seen the strings that attached everything, he must have cracked the fucking code. By lighting himself on fire, he solved the case, but he lit himself on fire because he couldn't solve it. So the act of the self-immolation ultimately solved the case. This is crazy. And there, man, what a, what a story. And the criminals also had so much honor that they respected him so much that they just quit. It almost comes off like the monster with 21 faces didn't actually want to hurt anyone or even make money for that matter. Why place labels on tainted goods? Why not actually collect on the money? Why leave the CEO unmonitored which allowed for yeah. his escape? That we don't know. In the end, we're never going to know what the monster really wanted. Was it to make a point to society or to play out his very own detective fantasy in real life? The answers remain unclear, but what's troubling to think about is that the monster with 21 one, faces Dacronix, could still be alive today, and, and inverted, much like the fiend, the pixel. monster remains unseen. Thank you. That was great, but what an un- like, I, I can't help but feel like it's all wasted. So like, the guy, who, they're the team behind the monster with 21 condoms, like, they did something crazy. Like, they did something nuts, and no one will ever know who it was. So those, that group, or that maybe one person, they can never fucking brag about it. They can never be like, I'm a genius. Like, this guy probably sits at the dinner table with his family or his friends, he's like, yeah, I'm fucking smart as shit. And then he can never prove it, because he can't just be like, yeah, I'm the monster with 21 faces or whatever. Such a waste. You did something nuts, and no one will ever know. Except you. You yourself are the only one that will know. Shame.